Under the cover of night, in the hidden alleys of America, secret communities thrive. According to the Federal Bureau of Investigation, over 1.4 million Americans are associated with 33,000 gangs across the country. Today, we will delve into the world of fans of a Detroit rap duo which has grown into a multi-thousand strong gang. We will uncover the secrets of the deadliest decade and reveal the organization behind it. But this is just the beginning, as our journey will culminate in a meeting with bikers from the most fearsome motorcycle club in the United States. Let's begin! The subculture of American streets has always been criminalized. Here's an example, the 18th Street Gang. The group is considered the largest street community in California, with approximately 15,000 members. In reality, they are a collection of about 20 separate autonomous bands. It's said that this group is responsible for at least one robbery or assault per day in the Los Angeles County. It's one of the fastest growing criminal organizations in the country, with its influence spanning 32 states, from Maryland to Hawaii. Police accuse them of murders, extortion, drug trafficking, and car thefts. I've always been interested in the emergence of gangs. Remember The Godfather? Judging by the plot, everything could have happened differently if Vito Corleone just had a regular job. That's how the 18th Street Gang emerged in the turbulent socio-economic landscape of 1960s Los Angeles. The gang, primarily composed of Spanish-speaking members, took root in an area marked by poverty and social unrest. Initially, the group formed as a means of protection and solidarity among disenfranchised youth facing challenging circumstances. However, over time, it evolved from a neighborhood support network into a formidable criminal organization. The community's influence extended far beyond its initial surroundings. Members of the 18th Street Gang used several clothing items and imagery to signify their affiliation with the gang. Some of these include sports jerseys with the numbers 18 or 99 and a figurine of a blue devil with horns. The gang still consists primarily of men. There are three ways for women to join the gang. The first is an 18-second beating. The beatings may be substituted with sexual acts with multiple gang members. Also, a woman may eventually join the gang by being the girlfriend or wife of a member of the criminal community. Some groups from 18th Street in South Los Angeles feud with black gangs. During this nine-month struggle in 1993-94, 17 murders were committed. Federal and local law enforcement agencies have developed various strategies to combat the gang's criminal activities on 8th Street. However, the dynamic nature of gangs like the 18th, combined with their ability to adapt and evolve, creates ongoing challenges for authorities. Let's remember this name, because we'll come back to it later. The formation of a gang can be influenced not only by social and racial discrimination, but also by any music fan movement. For example, fans of the Detroit rap duo Insane Clown Posse, notorious for their elaborately painted clown faces and rowdy behavior at concerts, created their own criminal group. Juggalos and Juggalettes, these people managed to create an entire community around one musical group, and this community acquired a rather bad reputation among Americans. In 2011, the FBI officially declared Juggalos a loosely organized hybrid gang, further solidifying their dubious reputation. Initially just fervent fans of the horror rap group with painted faces, they transformed into an unconventional hybrid gang with a loose structure and unclear motives. Many juggalos engage in only petty crimes, such as simple drug possession and theft, but the FBI notices increasingly gang-like behavior, namely forming organized groups and committing other serious crimes. Juggalos have been noted in states such as California, Pennsylvania, and Utah. The FBI listed Juggalos as a gang in 2011, leading to a host of real-world problems for fans of the group. People take the FBI very seriously, and any gang affiliation can hinder job opportunities or even joining the military. In response to the FBI's decision, the Insane Clown Posse organized a march on Washington to challenge their gang designation. Thousands of protesters with clown faces came to Washington to demonstrate their support for their big family. The number of protesters exceeded the number of rallies in support of Trump, which took place on the same day. Although Juggalos marching through the nation's capital sought to show a softer side of their unity, not all fans of the duo are law-abiding citizens. 
Like in any community, there are certainly a few bad apples who committed insane crimes. Some of them are linked to murders, assaults, and even necrophilia. Insane fans have gone so far as to enact some of the group's most violent song lyrics. And two teenagers from this gang embodied the words of one of the tracks and hacked a wounded veteran with a meat cleaver. The reality is that being a juggalo or juggalette goes beyond being fans. It's a family striving to create strong bonds within the community and glorifying oddities in all forms. From the frenzy of music fans, we return to the streets of America, where sometimes a different kind of music is heard. Mara Salvatrucha, or MS-13, is perhaps the most dangerous gang in the country at the moment. It originated in El Salvador, became transnational, and its members operate across the territory of 42 states, with crimes even occurring in Canada. Tens of thousands of members are located in Central America, with a high concentration in Guatemala and Honduras. It is reported that the gang has about 50,000 members worldwide. MS-13 emerged, as it's known today, from Salvadoran refugees. During the period from 1980 to 1990, due to the Civil War, the number of Salvadoran immigrants in the US increased from 94,000 to 465,000. Many of these immigrants grew up in dangerous environments. When they arrived in Los Angeles, they were thrown into the established Latino gang system, where they were not welcome. They had to prove themselves as a force to be reckoned with. The word Mara is a Central American term meaning gang. The word Salva refers to El Salvador, and Trucha in slang means smart. The term Salva Trucha historically was used to describe a group of peasants trained as guerrillas. Kill, rape, control is the motto of Mara Salva Trucha. Members prefer machetes and knives to guns, because such weapons make killing more personal and torturous. Gang members are known for their tattooed faces. The gang even controls the El Salvador prison completely. The institution is a real city with its blocks isolated from each other. The area is surrounded by a wall over two kilometers long. Despite this, the group often communicates with its members in prison there. Guards are too scared to stop this. The gang is known for its cruelty and ruthlessness, with numerous well-documented public crimes attributed to it. A gang member from San Francisco killed a family because they briefly blocked his car. MS-13's biggest rivalry is the 18th Street Gang. There they are again, as I promised. MS-13 had a brief truce with the 18th Street Gang in 2013, but it was broken a year later. This led to the deadliest month in a decade. About 16 people were killed every day, and some believe the truce was a cover, allowing the gangs to expand. The FBI has a separate division and task force for MS-13, aimed at stopping the group and alerting the public to the threat it poses. Yet there is an argument that the all-powerful Latin American royal gang is the largest street gang in the country. Originally formed in Chicago in the 1940s, the Latin Kings became the largest criminal community in the US due to its highly organized structure. The gang's influence extends to 34 states, with around 18,000 members in Chicago alone. All gang members share the group's religious aesthetics. Gang rules require members to be ready to resort to violence, even if it means beating up their colleagues. Latin Kings emphasize respect among members. Internal feuds are actually prohibited and only high-ranking members can approve retaliatory actions between warring factions within the gang. Things like unwillingness to share drug sale profits or disrespecting a higher-ranking gang member can be brought to the gang's court. This is an inner organization consisting of selected members. It often meets out very cruel punishments. Prescribed punishment for violations includes the 2 inches for 45 inches rule, where other gang members beat a person for 45 seconds. If someone shares internal information, they may get the Wall Act, where other members beat them for 2 minutes and 30 seconds. In some cases, it can be a simple monetary fine, but often club members receive a warning, beating or death, due to their motto stating that a king only tastes death once. Those who seriously violate the rules end up on beat on sight or liquidate on sight lists. Gang members are constantly subject to checks, None of the gangsters are untouchable. If he doesn't pass the test, he can potentially be ordered to stop working on the spot 
allowing any active Latin king to kill him. The Latin king's gang has many rituals in which members must participate, from celebrating certain holidays to various gang signs they use. Gestures, prayers and other means of communication and identification are very precise and highly ritualistic. From kissing the crown before the supreme leader to how they cross their arms, everything is regulated. The kings have been the subject of numerous federal operations aimed at arresting gang members and restricting the growing influence of the group. Latin American gangs are a dominant force on the streets of America. I've already shown you gangs from El Salvador, but here's another one from a different country. The Trinitarios, primarily consisting of Dominicans, are known for their deadly rivalry with other street gangs like the Bloods, Crips and Dominicans Don't Play. Gang members also engage in recruitment in high schools across New York and New Jersey. It's said that the Trinitarios recruit members in high school senior classes while they are young. Gangsters stand behind a series of shootings among teenagers and machete-related deaths. Formed in New York's prison system in the 1980s, the ultra-violent Trinitarios quickly spread to the streets as inmates were released. The gang emerged in the 1980s on Rikers Island, where a group of Dominican inmates united to protect each other inside. The gang's influence is now felt in all five boroughs of New York City and in at least 10 states, covering every corner of the country. One of the leaders is Leonidas Jr. Sierra, who remains behind bars to this day. In the past, he has been charged with running a gang from his prison cell. According to police sources, this criminal community specialization includes machete-related murders, drug trafficking and prostitution. Members are distinguished by green bandanas, which every gang member has. Their name translates loosely to Trinity, which refers to their three main beliefs – God, brotherhood and freedom. Gang members lure vulnerable women into their urban apartments, where they are then forced to work as sex slaves. Another trademark is the machete, which gang members prefer to use instead of firearms, because it allows for a more personal attack. While their rivals have long been on detectives' radars, the Trinitarios have remained relatively unnoticed. Nevertheless, the FBI arrested the leader of the Trinitarios faction on Long Island for drug trafficking, and another 50 members were apprehended in the Bronx during a raid related to illegal firearms use and numerous murders especially in the Upper Manhattan area. And I'll conclude my video today with a group that was formed based on a hobby. The Mongols Biker Gang was formed in the late 1960s in East Los Angeles by David Santillan, primarily known for committing violent crimes, including assaults, intimidations and killings. They have also been involved in racially motivated violence against members of an African-American gang and even African-American civilians, unaffiliated with any criminal communities. Because of their crimes, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms named the Mongols the most violent and dangerous gang in America. Most Mongols gang members are Spanish-speaking men living in the Los Angeles area many of whom are former members of street gangs with a long history of using violence to settle disputes. According to law enforcement agencies, the Mongols gang has about 2,000 full members, relatively few compared to other biker gangs like the Hells Angels. However, despite their size, they successfully wrested control of Southern California from the Hells Angels in the 1980s after a protracted gang war. Mongols members have a long history of involvement in illegal drug trafficking, money laundering and robberies. These crimes have made this gang one of the most feared biker clubs in the US, and at one point, 270 warrants were issued against them. As a result, they were banned from wearing their club logo. The decision was later reversed, but they were fined half a million dollars, which apparently was just a slap on the wrist for these self-proclaimed outlaws. In 2002, Mongols and Hells Angels members clashed at Harris Laughlin Casino, resulting in the deaths of three bikers. In 2008, four undercover agents infiltrated the club during an operation called Operation Black Rain. The operation led to the arrest of 38 bikers, including Mongols president Ruben Doc Cavazos at the time. Another fact you may not know is that Mongols members have their own coded language for communicating with each other in secretive situations. For example, code 55 
means all gang members must conceal their gang affiliation by not wearing jackets, patches, or anything else with the Mongols' logo. According to the FBI, gangs are involved in 48% of violent crimes and continue to increase their danger. Some even acquire weapons from the military and become more aggressive. At the same time, many gangs seek to expand their influence beyond national borders, asserting themselves on the international stage. This world of hidden alliances and dark dealings continues to evolve, leaving traces on the streets and in people's hearts. Subscribe to the channel, leave your comments, and be ready for new discoveries and revelations, because the history of gangs in America is far from over.